بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وذريته أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا وكريمنا ومجانا ومأونا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين الله رب العالمين states in the Holy Quran إن الذين يؤذون الله ورسوله لعنهم الله في الدنيا والآخرة وأعد لهم عذابا مهينا You and I will be aware of the incidents which took place during the last few days at a grammar school in Batley where a religious education teacher showed offensive caricature, offensive, degrading, disrespectful cartoon of our noble and beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the peoples in his class, the majority of whom were Muslim. I say to the teacher, for you, the message is the ayah which I have recited. Those who seek to cause harm to Allah and His Messenger. In other words, those who disrespect Allah or His Messenger, or in any other way, shape, or form, seek to cause harm to them or to Islam. The curse and wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon them. And for them, Allah has prepared the most humiliating punishment in the hereafter. You have attempted to incite, you have spread hate, you have discriminated and targeted Muslims, you have done this deliberately, and for you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already decreed and decided. And you stand with the enemies of Islam. You have written your name in the list of the biggest enemies of Islam. And to the school I say, you have offered a sincere apology. But a sincere apology is not sufficient. You know, everyone knows, what happened in France last year and how the entire Muslim world was hurt, was offended. Their sentiments were hurt. And the entire Muslim world reacted in one way or another to what France did when they committed blasphemy against our noble Prophet So it is not a simple matter of issuing an apology. And you have suspended the teacher, you have not dism dismissed him from his duties, from his job. Imagine if this was a Jewish school and the two thirds of the students were of Jewish background. Would a teacher be allowed or even have the indecency to utter anything against the Jewish faith utter a sentence which would be classified within the anti-Semitism laws? Would he deny the Holocaust? No, he would not. Why? Because you are speaking to the people that you, if you say something, you will offend them. You did this deliberately. Your teacher did this deliberately. This is gross misconduct. The teacher hides behind the, the notion of freedom of expression as the French did last year and as they did in 2015. 
and they cause chaos and terror in the world. And this is what your teacher did. And you hide behind employment law. But when it comes to the Prophet وسلم, we have no tolerance. We are peace-loving, peaceful people. But we cannot tolerate in silence this disrespect. And we cannot let your normal procedures and protocols be followed. We demand that he is dismissed from his job. Because this offense that he has committed is an offense against Islam, against the Prophet of Islam. And he has not just targeted the children who were sat in front of him, he has targeted the entire Muslim Ummah from one corner of the world to the other. So it is simply not good enough that you follow your normal inquiry and that you follow a protocol or a procedure and you take days and days before you decide. He should have been dismissed immediately. And to the government I say that rather than supporting the victims coming out and saying that the victims of this are the Muslims, not just the Muslims, not just the pupils and their parents, and not just the, the population, the Muslim population of Batli, but the targets and those who have suffered the consequence of this, and those who have been hurt are the Muslims of not just Yorkshire, but of the entire United Kingdom. Not just the entire United Kingdom, but every single Muslim who has an ounce of Iman in him, who has an ounce of faith and love for the, for the Messenger of Allah will be deeply hurt by this. So you have, by siding with, with the teacher, by saying that we, we are on his side, you have sought to divide. And under the Human Rights European Court, they decided in a judgment that it is not permissible to, in the name of freedom of expression, to have a blanket scenario where you can disrespect and you can hurt a particular community, a particular faith. You have to take into consideration the balance between freedom of expression and hurting the sentiments of a community. And the Muslim community is a large community in the United Kingdom. And I say to you and I, I address myself and I address our ulama and our scholars and our MPs and our community leaders that this is because of your silence. This is because of our silence. We remained silent in 2015 when France committed the blasphemy in, in general, apart from a few voices. We remain almost unanimously signed last year when the biggest blasphemy ever was committed. The biggest, in my opinion, form of terrorism was committed against the faith of Islam and the, the messenger of Islam sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And we remain silent. And because you remain silent, this is the consequence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put you in a test now that right in your own back garden, right in front of you, Right within your vicinity, a blasphemy has taken place. If we had spoken at the time, and I personally wrote to the MPs, members of the House of Lords, and I wrote to our ulama, and I got nothing that except silence in return. And this silence, one of our Imam, one of our Shayyuf, I, I do not recall whether it was Imam Abu Hanifa or the likes of Hazrat Imam Abu Hanifa, somebody of that caliber. He said that when you remain silent, when oppression is taking place and you do not stand up against oppression, you are siding with the oppressor. You are, you are siding with his uh, agenda and you are standing with him. So it's, we have to speak out. We have to speak out. We love the Prophet more than we love our parents, more than we love our children, more than we love the entire mankind, more than we love ourselves. So how can we remain silent when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is disrespected? Narae takbir, narae risalat, narae hadri. We cannot and we will not remain silent. We will protest in every peaceful way possible. We will use our democratic right and we will stand up. And those Muslim leaders who say, oh, let the school carry out their process. Do not go out and protest outside the school. Do not raise your voices. We are a peace-loving community. Just stay uh, in your houses. 
last year when one uh, Afro-Caribbean individual, George Floyd, died and he was killed in America, the entire world from Los Angeles to Sydney stood up. There were protests and thousands in the middle of the, this pandemic. But no one spoke out against them because they were standing up for racial equality. And you, you are telling me that we cannot stand up for the honor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And I will finish with this, our poet of the East, our great thinker, he says, Muslim maqam Mustafa. This is the teaching of Islam. He says the heart of the believer is the station of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa In every single heart of every believer in the world, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa resides. Dardale Muslim. Maqam Mustafa, and I want to convey this message to those who who will hear my voice. Our Mustafa, our honor, our dignity, our respect of this Ummah, this entire Ummah, lies with the respect of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If he is respected, if his honor is preserved, if his honor is defended, then we have honor, we have respect, we have dignity. But if his honor is attacked, his, his personality is attacked, he is mocked and he is attacked and he is targeted, then the entire Muslim Ummah is targeted and the Muslim Ummah will love the Prophet until the day of judgment. And you will never ever be able to take out the love of Rasulullah from our hearts because it is the fundamental of Iman. It is the very foundation of Iman. It is the essence of our faith.